Hello, my dear friends. How are you? I'm Ari Ferger, and today I'm going to talk about the first or the oldest runic alphabet. And be attentive to what I'm saying. Alphabet. Not the oldest runic symbols appearing in rock art. Petroglyphs that express human communication through symbology. But the first, or better still, <laughs> the oldest runic alphabet. Meaning runic symbols that express letters of a clear alphabet and therefore the combination of such runes form words of a language. But indeed it doesn't matter really <laughs> because the oldest runic symbols come from the exact same place as of the first runic alphabet and writing system, obviously. But I'm going to focus on the first runic alphabet and writing system. Uh, let me show you some uh, examples here. I'll put them somewhere <laughs> around here. Um, these are the first or the oldest uh, runic symbols that express letters and therefore express a writing system by the use of a structured alphabet. And let me tell you just now, these are not Scandinavian. These are not even Germanic. These are not Indo-European. The runes and runic symbols are not Indo-European, right? And before we start this, I want to say a few words, if you allow me. First, for those of you who study the runes, be that scientifically or in an academic sense, or a more exoteric sense as well, I think you are going to appreciate this video, and there is certainly useful information in this video concerning the runes, and to show you how old they are. In fact, so far, they are the oldest known form of writing. Secondly, as I've expressed before, the runic alphabet I'm going to show you today and writing system uh, isn't Germanic in the slightest. And for those who say the runes are an Indo-European creation, well, they are not. Uh, let me tell you just that. They have nothing to do with Indo-Europeans. And the point of this video isn't to try to diminish the importance of runes in the Germanic historical context. My aim isn't to try to take away the historical value of runes in that same context, especially Scandinavian historical context. If anything, uh, the Germanic peoples, especially Scandinavians, uh, were the only ones that kept the, the use of the runes until quite late. Continue on with this tradition uh, in some remote places as far as the 19th century and even early 20th century. While the other countries, including the, the place of their origins, the origins of the runes, stopped using them because they were forced to due to the introduction of other cultures and other forms of writing and alphabets. Uh, my aim with this video is to show you the historical truth, and that's it. Which is important to cut with some wrong notions once and for all. But I shall get to that. And, well, yes, we can also speak about the Greeks, but that is quite different and their form of writing, not alphabet, writing, isn't a tradition coming from the runes. As you can see from uh, this picture in here, <laughs> this was the first known Greek form of writing which was lost circa 1100 BCE, which has nothing to do with runic symbols. And then later on, the Greek alphabet we know of was born when the Greeks ad adapted the Phoenician writing system to represent their own language, and the alphabet is dated to the second half of the 8th century BCE. And these lo look a lot more like runes. And indeed, the Phoenician alphabet may indeed have been influenced by the runes, but not a tradition coming from the east, but coming from the west, into the east and back. And I will explain all of this further ahead, don't worry. <laughs> and no, Russian characters of the Russian alphabet were not influenced by the Vikings and their runes. The Russian alphabet, as you know it, comes from the early Cyrillic alphabet, which was developed uh, during the late 9th century. Uh, of the common era, on the basis of the Greek alphabet. Now, thirdly and finally, <laughs> we live in a wonderful era where information is easily acquired on the internet and people are hungry for knowledge, which is absolutely great, it's absolutely wonder wonderful. Claiming to be ignorant in certain aspects is no longer a valid argument. 
However, with all this flowing of information, well, there is a new problem, which has always been there, of course, but not greatly augmented as it is nowadays, which is false information. <laughs> there are a lot of misinterpretations, surely, and many times those are honest mistakes or not knowing where to look, and obviously, no one knows the truth of everything. But there is also an awful lot of people, unfortunately, who continue to twist history for their own political propagandas. Uh, there are well-known YouTubers, for instance, in this area of academia, who continue to spill out false notions and twisted political ideas that have reshaped history in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, precisely for political reasons, to aggrandize a sense of pride built on a false legacy. And nowadays, uh, these historical concoctions based on national political ideas continue to be spread. We still have a lot of racists promoting the same lies and making it look as the truth. This is one of the reasons why I prefer to remain impartial, neutral, as much as possible when I speak about any historical subject. I'm not saying I'm apolitical without any specific political notions. I am into politics. I'm not as blind as a bat. but. I try to put aside my personal, religious, political, even spiritual views and beliefs to avoid having any influence upon the truth. Even if the truth isn't to my liking, it happens sometimes. <laughs> but I still want to share it because people need to know the truth. Otherwise, we will never evolve and we will never learn from the mistakes of the past. If we forget the past or reshape it into something false, how can we possibly learn and evolve and become better. Obviously, no one is perfect and once in a while I'm not impartial either. I know that. <laughs> because when it comes to racism and other forms of oppression, for instance, I will always speak against them, as I am doing it right now. But you need to understand, I, I know you know this, I know you are aware of this, but there is an awful lot of falsehood continuously being spread. And some people in the academic field continue to reinforce false notions because they are influenced by their own political views and completely make a distortion of the truth and concoct a completely new history that never existed. People have the right to know the truth. And more often than not, precisely in the case of the runes, they are still being used in a variety of political propagandas. And some known scientists, historians, archaeologists, even anthropologists, even here on YouTube, especially here on YouTube and such other platforms, use these platforms to spread their political views, completely twisting history. And it's time to revise history. And it's time to say, hey, sod off to the status quo. Especially when it comes to paganism and especially when it comes to hiddenry and religious organizations based on some aspects of Germanic paganism that want to make hiddenry pure and then end up constructing new age religions and they claim to be pagan and express absolutely the opposite of what was the real pagan past by completely discarding historical evidences of cultural syncretism among <laughs> the ancient heathens. Some modern neo-pagan religious organizations and groups and communities are nothing more than political views disguised as paganism and exclude whatever does not fit into their narrow and shallow identity. Many of these groups idealize the 19th century nationalist romanticism in which the mythology of ancient peoples was in fact twisted, shaped and reshaped for political ends. These reconstructionist efforts are complete inventions and not reconstructionism at all, but actually political constructions inventing and borrowing elements to fit in the gaps that better express their political notions. And then such groups have set out to formalize their newly invented systems 
to create churches, temples <laughs> that have been recognized by governments. You know exactly of what I'm speaking of. Anyway, finally, <laughs> on this video, I'm going to remain impartial, as always, to show you the historical truth as much as we are able to know so far. And as an archaeologist myself, it's somewhat easier to discern the truth from the falsehood when in front of us, in the archaeological context, we have physical proof that goes absolutely against historical fictions. People have the right to know the truth and not political con con conceptions that distort the historical truth. As much as the truth might be inconvenient sometimes, <laughs> inconvenient to our own perceptions and beliefs, the truth is important, so we may learn to live with it and evolve and become better. And now, with no more delay, <laughs> let's get started. So, the runes, where have they come from? <laughs> Without a doubt, you have heard that the runes came from the East, uh, most likely from the Phoenicians or the Etruscans. But the runes are in fact a Western writing system and the oldest writing system known so far. Without counting with petroglyphs expressing animals, abstract conceptions and anthropomorphic figures, those are not letters and those do not form a clear alphabet and therefore also not a writing system but a set of images that express a story or a particular account. While runic symbols at first also started to be stylized representations of a variety of human, natural and cosmic phenomena that together did not express a language, did not express letters and therefore together did not, did, did not form words but instead expressed accounts, stories. However, at a certain point the runes continued to be used until they became equivalent to letters and therefore, putting them together, obviously, <laughs> it formed words, clear sentences, and we have the formulation of an alphabet. And when that happened, it was in a time no other writing system that we know of existed yet. So the runes were the first writing system. Of course, you can, or you might say, Hey, but Arif, what in the bloody hell? What about the Sumerian and Akkadian cuneiform? Hey, calm down. That was one of the earliest systems of writing. Writing. Invented by the Sumerians in ancient Mesopotamia. One of the earliest, not the oldest of them all. We have a pre-cuneiform uh, from around the end of the 4th millennium BCE, uh, obviously. Uh, and the cuneiform writing system was created around uh, 3200 BCE. The runic alphabet I will show you in this video is older than that, right? Now, I need you to pay close attention to the historical dates and cultures I'll put somewhere <laughs> in here. Uh, or take note if you must or if you want, uh, so you can compare them with the oldest runic uh, writing system and subsequently alphabet, which is from Western Europe. But I shall get there. I just need to talk a little bit about other historical realities first, so you might understand all of this. Certainly, uh, you have heard that the Germanic runes were influenced by the North Italic script, or Old Italic script, which was a system used by the Etruscans. Uh, as it is well known, and without a doubt, the Etruscans had a great cultural influence upon the indigenous peoples of the Italic Peninsula. It's, it's somewhat difficult to understand the origins of the Etruscans, but perhaps based on their religion and the representation of their gods, animal hybrids, before having been influenced by uh, Hellenic religion, it all points to the Near East. Their culture before the contact with the Hellenic world was very much oriental, perhaps from Asia Minor, somewhere around nowadays Turkey, maybe. But before the Etruscans, there were the Phoenicians. Now, pay close attention. Phoenician is a Canaanite language, closely related to Hebrew. The Phoenicians, as you know, were from where it is nowadays Israel and uh, Lebanon. However, 
Phoenician language, culture and writing were strongly influenced by Egypt, by Egyptians. Phoenician was written using cuneiform symbols that were common across Mesopotamia. But the first vestiges we find of a Phoenician alphabet derived from Egyptian hieroglyphs as well. And Phoenician letters are simplifications of Egyptian hieroglyph hieroglyphic symbols. And they date from approximately the 12th century BCE. They have nothing runic in appearance. However, by 1000 BCE, the Phoenician language, as well as the alphabet, changed. Started to look a lot more like runes all of a sudden. And as said before, eventually the Greeks, who were in close trading contact with these people, adopted the Phoenician alphabet, added vowel sounds, and thus created the Greek alphabet, upon which our modern Latin alphabet is based on. The Etruscans used these same symbols, or variations of these symbols, influenced by the Phoenicians and the contact with the Greeks. The Etruscans brought this writing system into the north of the Italic Peninsula during the Iron Age, thus influencing both the Latin peoples and the Sabines, and the Linguras and so on and so forth, a variety of peoples. <laughs> and I'll put uh, the dates in here of the progression of the runic letters uh, in this part of the world. What we can see from the runic systems of the Levant, the, the eastern part of the Mediterranean, uh, the oldest of the systems dates back to at least 3,000 years ago. So this is the point when some historians would agree and would say the, the runes as an alphabet, not a writing system, come from this period and are no more than 3,000 years of age and from Asia Minor. But as said before, there are plenty of evidences of prehistoric runic symbols, uh, pictographic symbols representing trees, uh, tools, the natural phenomenon that have been preserved in rock carvings and few surviving wooden objects. So the runes as symbols are much older and have developed through time until they became eventually alphabets. So if we find the oldest runic symbols, we will certainly find the oldest runic writing system and subsequently alphabet, which influenced all others. It's obvious, right? The peoples who have been using the, these runic symbols longer will also be the ones to create the first alphabet out of those same runic symbols. And the first runic symbols we find date at least approximately 17,500 years ago from where it is nowadays, Portugal, during the Western Atlantic Paleolithic, well into the Paleolithic, before the end of the last glacial period, obviously. So, the first runic alphabet also comes from where it is nowadays Portugal. And the first runic alphabet dates approximately circa 7,500 to 6,000 years ago, early Western Atlantic Neolithic. The runic alphabet and writing system is called the Alvão writing, and by far it is the oldest known runic alphabet and writing system, and also the oldest alphabet in the world, and therefore a form of writing <laughs> known to us so far. And it is called the Alvão writing because they appear in Alvão, in northern Portugal. So let's see what we can say about this. So the runic alphabet from Alvão, northern Portugal, which also happens to be the oldest writing system and subsequently the oldest alphabet in the world, known so far. <laughs> now, I need you to pay close attention to the information <laughs> I'm about to say. Uh, if you are still there, of course, I'm certain some people have already stormed off. They wanted the truth, but they can't handle the truth. <laughs> anyway. The Alvão writing system isn't something that was found recently. In archaeology, we know about this for at least a hundred years. This information has been around for about a century, right? But there is this continuation of a belief that the runes are Germanic, and other people, as a form of argument against certain nationalist far-right political views, use the argument that the runes came from the Phoenicians and, the, and then the Etruscans. They are not entirely right and they are not entirely wrong. 
Uh, without a doubt, there are clear evidences of cultural syncretism, and indeed, the Phoenicians influenced the Greeks and the Etruscans, and the old Italic script would influence Celts and Germanic peoples. But many scientists, many historians and archaeologists and anthropologists, for some reason, purposely forget about Western Europe, the Atlantic. And within the academic world, it all ends up being a battle of political views instead of seeking the actual truth. More often than not, it's not about historical evidences at all, but trying to forcibly push evidences to support political views and use them as arguments against political, other political parties. As said before, the Alvão writing system, and subsequently alphabet, has been known for a century. So it's not just a question of revising and rewriting history, it's also a question of stopping ignoring history. And I have, no, I have known about this subject for years, for about six years. <laughs> I was just waiting to have a little bit more subscribers because I think this is an important subject to be shared. And people often purposely forget about Western Europe. Surely, there has been several great, important cultural contributions from the East, but many people seem to forget that there has always been also a lot of cultural factors starting in the West and moved eastwards and then came back. Such is the case of the Bell Beaker culture. It started where it is nowadays Portugal as well. And the serpent cult, the famous serpent cult and one of the most widespread cultural phenomenon, also started more or less 20,000 years ago, where it is nowadays Portugal and spread eastwards and came back eventually. And the R1B haplogroup, which is one of the most common in Europe, came from where it is nowadays Portugal and spread eastwards and north once again. These are all subjects I will explore in, in future videos, don't worry. Now, the Alvão writing is the exact same thing. It came from the west and went eastwards and back eventually. The Alvão writing system. So far, it is the world's oldest writing system and alphabet, and it was created between 7,500 and 6,000 years ago in Trás-os-Montes, which is a region of northern Portugal, where Alvão is located. It was believed that the history of the alphabet started in ancient Egypt, when more than a millennium of writing history had passed. Pay close attention to what I'm saying in terms of alphabet and what is an alphabet. It was thought that the first consonant alphabet would have appeared around 2000 BCE, representing the language of the Semitic workers in Egypt, and which was influenced by the alphabetic principles of Egyptian hieratic writing. Almost all the alphabets in the world today are directly descended from or inspired by this development. The most widely used alphabet in the world today is the Latin alphabet, derived from the Greek alphabet, the first real alphabet for consistently assigning letters to both consonants and vowels. The Greek alphabet, in turn, came from the Phoenician alphabet, which in reality was a system in which each symbol represents a consonant. Now, please, pay close attention. Writing should not be confused with alphabet. Writing would have been invented by the Sumerians. The alphabet is an evolved and standardized way of representing sounds that was created, created later to standardize precisely writing. Historians, in general, have accepted the Phoenician as the most primitive and rudimentary alphabet known, dating closely to 4,000 years old of age, give or take. The Phoenician alphabet came to replace the cuneiform writing. So first there was writing, and then came an alphabet. However, other hypotheses began to emerge raised mainly by archaeological findings a hundred years ago. And with the development of technology and the intensive studies of such findings, 
we began to think otherwise. The Alvão writing, which also happens to be a structured alphabet, which points to an appearance of an alphabet prior to the Phoenicians, with 7,500 to 6,000 years ago of existence. Subsequently, it's also the oldest writing system. This is the best candidate, so to speak, to be considered the oldest writing system and alphabet of the world, until we find another. <laughs> Supposedly, writing had occurred in ancient Mesopotamia, invented by the Sumerians around 5,200 years ago. But the Alvão writing and alphabet dates to, the, to at least 7,500 years ago. So it's in the Iberian Peninsula that writing occurs and then spreads to the rest of the continent. Of course, by the examples you have seen here from the Alvon writing, uh, it has nothing to do with Sumerian and Akkadian writing. Those are cuneiforms, while the Alvon writing is clearly runic. So, this writing did not influence ancient Mesopotamia, but it is older and influenced a variety of other civilizations, other cultures, and spread from the west into the east, and then it came back again. And what is also interesting to notice is that there are runic symbols in nowadays Portugal, along the North Atlantic, pictographic symbols dating back to at least 17,500 years ago, which is absolutely maddening, and the Alvão writing and alphabet comes directly from those runic symbols. A lost civilization from the Iberian Peninsula, from the West Atlantic, which around 12,000 years ago, uh, due to some natural catastrophe, they disappeared. But their writing system as well, among other things, uh, was maintained and spread eastwards. The natural catastrophe was probably a great flood which coincides with the end of the last glacial period. And no, I'm not saying this, this was Atlantis. And this were the Atlants or the Atlanteans or whatever. What I'm saying is that we lost traces of this civilization from these runic symbols around the last glacial period and the melting of the ice. A lot of civilizations went down the waves with the melting of the ice. There's nothing new about that, right? Anyway. It's understandable why the first runes come from the Iberian Peninsula, while the rest of Europe, almost all of Europe, was frozen solid 17,500 years ago, parts of the Iberian Peninsula were the only safe haven, mostly the south and along the coast, the West Atlantic. And it's from here that people start to migrate all over the place, especially during the end of the last glacial period, around 11,000 years ago, give or take which is precisely when groups of people follow reindeer to the north and start to settle in Scandinavia as well, and obviously other parts of the continent. So it's natural, and I think it's obvious, <laughs> that a lot of important cultural phenomena started um, in the Iberian Peninsula and spread. People often focus too much on Indo-Europeans and then the cultures that came after and seldom observe the realities of the past before Indo-Europeans, uh, even before the Neolithic, before the Mesolithic. People seldom, rarely, take a look at the Paleolithic and the last glacial period. So yes, indeed, the runes are a very ancient cultural phenomenon, dating to at least 17,500 years ago, in the west of the Iberian Peninsula. And around 7,500 years ago, these runic symbols became the first, the oldest writing system known so far, and the oldest runic alphabet subsequently. And the language and words are still being deciphered, based on the languages and writing systems that came after and developed from the Alvão writing, which I will show you a few examples. Uh, which leads me to talk a little bit about the Iberian languages of the Bronze Age and the Iron Age, which derive directly from the Alvão writing system and show a clear evolution from it and became several alphabets. I'll put in here some examples and I'm quite certain uh, you will notice a lot of runes quite familiar to you from the Germanic runes, but all these examples I'm showing here 
which are not from the Alvão writing system now, but what came after derived from it, are all examples before the runes appear in Germanic context, and certainly way before the runes were even known in Scandinavia. Some of these examples, of course, are, uh, well, are from the Bronze Age, even before Phoenicians, so obviously before Etruscans, and the Greeks, and the Romans, and the Italic alphabet that would influence Germanic peoples. But of course, other examples are already from the Iron Age, which coincides with the Phoenician and Old Italic script eventually. But that's the thing, this is a cultural phenomenon that starts in the West, moves east and comes back. And at a certain point in history, at least in Western Europe and along the southern Mediterranean, everyone was using runes before the Germanic peoples. But from the Alvão writing system and eventually alphabet, which is runic in nature, came several other alphabets. And the examples here which helps us to decipher the Alvão alphabet. I'm putting here several examples of Iberian languages and alphabets. Celto-Galatian, Celto-Iberian, Iberian, Lusitanian, Tartatian, uh, Southwestern and Northern alphabets of the Iberian Peninsula. It's a beauty. <laughs> now, uh, I'll show you a group of Paleo-Hispanic writing systems in a moment, uh, derived from the Alvão writing system. I'm certain you can notice a lot of runes uh, so familiar to us from the Futharks, for instance. But all these examples are before Germanic peoples knew the runes or used them. Most of these are Bronze Age, so the Alvão writing system had probably already been forgotten by then, but these examples are the evolution of that ancient writing system. And these Paleo-Hispanic writing systems lasted for a very, very long time, until at least the 5th century of the Common Era. Romans invaded the Iberian Peninsula during the late Iron Age, um, during the 2nd century BCE. So these writing systems were also introduced in the Roman culture, and Romans wrote with both these and their own writing system, which little did they knew it had derived from this part of the world thousands of years before. But the Romans also adopted these Paleo-Hispanic writing systems, which is precisely why we know the letters equivalent to these symbols. But of course, with the strong Roman influence, these writing systems stopped uh, being used and the Latin alphabet was eventually adopted. So, thousands of years of using the runes, they suddenly stop being used precisely in the, in the place of their origins due to the adoption of the Latin alphabet. But the, the, the Germanic peoples during the second century of the Common Era finally start to use them and extended the continuation of the runes, uh, the so-called Elder Futhark, from the second century of the Common Era until at least the eighth century. And then a variety of other runes came and eventually new runic alphabets. The Elder Futhark is not an alphabet, by the way, but the younger Futhark, in a way, is. But that is for the next video, I will explain that on the next video. But it is often, often said that the Germanic runes were influenced by the Roman alphabet, the old Italic script. But that's the interesting part. Almost all writing systems that were developed from the Greek or the Roman alphabets have preserved the order of the letters. With the rune rows, any rune row, including the so-called Elder Futhark, these characters are put together differently. There is no A, B, C, and D, and so on and so forth. There is a, a seemingly random alignment in rune rows. The sequence is completely rearranged. So if the runes had indeed come from the old Italic script influenced by the Etruscans, as it is often said, maybe the runes would start with the symbols equivalent to the same letters in the Roman alphabet, A, B, C, D, and so forth and so on. So, the Germanic runes may not derive directly for, from the contact with the Romans and their written culture, but that influence came through another culture. An influence from elsewhere.
from the west, the Alvão runes, progressively moving eastwards, influencing Phoenicians, subsequently the Greeks, Etruscans and the Latins, and then, and then again it returned west. Anyway, if you have reached this far, indeed the runes are ancient, and they have been around for several thousands of years. A cultural phenomenon starting in Western Europe, in the Iberian Peninsula, West Atlantic, where it is nowadays Portugal, mostly Northern Portugal. And then it spreads eastward until it reaches Asia Minor and east, the Eastern Mediterranean, only to come back again into the West and entire cultures completely forgetting the origins of, of it all. <laughs> but well, now you know and it's up to you to spread or not the, this knowledge to future generations. And I hope you have enjoyed this video and I do very much hope this was useful and that also people stop their political poison that twists history and turns it into something completely unreal and once and for all, stop ignoring history and become more impartial. <laughs> Always aiming to seek the truth and most importantly, spread the truth. Thank you so much for watching. See you on the next video. And as always, la corrida.